Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and one of the things I strive for in my personal reef tank is that it looks as close to a natural reef as possible. And to do that, I really want those corals to grow into each other. But that's sometimes easier said than done. As corals start to grow into each other, you can experience coral warfare. And there are going to be a lot of reasons for that, which we'll go over in this video. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how I manage coral warfare in this 210 gallon tank. Here's the tank in all its glory, and right now I think it looks fantastic. I've kind of got the whites cranked up for filming right now, but the tank is looking fantastic. And the goal is to make it look like a reef, and it's getting much closer to that. I've got a lot of coral overlap, I'm getting that 3D effect. So let's go in and let's take a look at some of these individual corals and see what I've got touching, what I've got pulled away, and what I'm getting away with. When it comes to the Monipora, they really shouldn't touch each other if you're worried about losing a little bit of coral. But in my case, I have tons of Monipora. And as you can see, as they start to grow together, there is coral warfare. They do battle each other, they do kill the edges off. So if you start looking at a lot of these edges, you'll see burned edges on the coral. And that's where the corals are coming together and fighting. But you'll also see with Monipora, the bigger problem is they start to overgrow each other. So more often than not, the big concern is just fragging and removing the pieces of Monipora so I can control the growth. For the most part, they have to be right next to each other before they start killing each other. So I can really let them grow in and then just make adjustments and pick winners and losers. This is even true when dealing with very dissimilar species of Monipora, like this Spongoda and the Plating Montes behind it. Very different corals, but staying's less of an issue and it's more about overgrowth. If you look here, I've really got to start looking at the plating stuff overgrowing the Spongoda because the plating stuff just grows so fast. The cool thing about the Spongoda is it will also grow up and really helps give that 3D reef effect that I'm looking for. Let's talk about the photosynthetic Gorgonian for a minute. And this is actually a pretty big coral. It's probably about a foot long. But it's cool because it doesn't take up a lot of room on the reef. As you can see, we have a relatively small base that this coral attaches to the rock and then grows up and out. So I get the 3D effect. It's a very thin branching coral, so I don't get a ton of shadowing out of it. So I can have this big, long 3D effect coming out of the reef with little shadowing or anything down below it. Pretty cool effect, which I really appreciate. And then I've got the same thing going on on the other side of the reef with the other gorg. I just have this huge, massive coral jetting out of the rockwork. Really, the base of it is almost completely shadowed out, but it's able to grow up and out and into the light and compete with the big leathers around it. It's fantastic placing, gives a really cool structural look, and it looks so much better with it than without it. And then I'm starting to reestablish some frags here. This is all just kind of a guesstimate. And as stuff grows out, I will pick winners and root losers and frag accordingly. So everything's placed kind of where I add space, plus lighting, the flow demands, and then I'm gonna let it grow. As stuff grows, we'll see what stuff's growing well, what stuff's touching each other, what stuff's causing problems. So at this point, it's a guess, and then as it grows, I make adjustments. Palithoas are notorious for overgrowing a reef. So the way I handle it here is that basically I've created their own little island that they're on. We've got a little brain over here, which hopefully will be enough to hold the pallies back. I kind of doubt it, but if I have to move the brain, I have to move the brain, and then that'll grow into the gorg, which I don't think the pallets Pallies will actually hurt the Gorgonian. And then behind it is a very shadowed area. So it's unlikely to be able to grow in that really deep shade. So I've got a little island here, and then the other side, I've got that big toadstool leather, which is really gonna stop anything else from growing that direction, because it as well will be shadowed. So even though it's on the main rock structure, I've managed to create an island just by 
shadowing and the placement of other corals around it. Now, of course, I'll monitor this and I will adjust accordingly as things change. This pectinia I bought years ago at Reefstock, and most of the time it lived in my basement because I didn't have a great place to put it. Now, part of the reason is, is pectinia has a reputation for doing major damage to the coral around it. So to combat that, I've got it kind of pushed in the back, which is a shame because I love the coral, but I can still see it pretty well, but it's a hard one to film. But it's back against the rock work where it's still getting decent lighting, but it's around some tougher neighbors like Euphelia, which I keep my eye on. Good news is this stuff grows back pretty well and I've got tons of it. So I'm not afraid to lose a couple of heads of Euphelia. That's part of the way I do things is coral grows out and once I have a lot, I can start gambling with some of the coral. If I lose a head or two of Euphelia, it's not that big of a deal. Whether I lose the hammer or the frog spawn, it really isn't that big of a deal. The pallies, I'm not gonna really worry about those. The only thing that I really have to worry about is this brain, but even though it looks real close on camera, it's a good four or five inches away, so it's probably okay. Up at the top of the tank, I've got basically a high growth neighborhood. We've got Pasolopora next to Bird's Nest. This Bird's Nest grows explosively, and then we've got a bunch of plating Montes around it. If you look behind it, we got Zoanthids and to the right, we have a toadstool leather. This is all coral that grows quickly, so I can kind of have it grow into each other and frag as needed to control it. This is gonna be a lot like gardening to manage this over the long term. But by doing this, I can have those cool, fast-growing corals up in highlight where they can really do what they wanna do and be the corals that they wanna be. On the top of the list, for aggressive corals for a lot of people is gonna be Hydnophora. And this one is an absolutely beautiful example. And I love Hydnophora because it looks so pretty, but it has a reputation for being incredibly destructive. It'll put out long sweeper tentacles that can sting everything around it. But I really wanted this coral in this tank. So the way I dealt with it was I put it on its own little kind of shadowed island. So hopefully it won't grow too crazy and out of control. And then the stuff around it is stuff that I'm not too worried about. Like the Montes above it, if those get stung, no big deal. I've got tons of that. The green cabbage leather is an amazing green cabbage leather, but it's gonna be relatively tough and as you can see, it's only about an inch from that Hydnophora, and it's been in that position for quite a while, and it's actually doing really well. Um, and then I've got two pieces of gold Leptoceris. Now, these are in a more shadowed area, and it shouldn't really compete with the Hydnophora for space. But the Leptoceris is cool because they can handle those shadows where the Hydnophora really can't. Now, I would not recommend putting your gold Leptoceris next to a Hydnophora unless you're like me and these are extra pieces that you fragged specifically for this purpose. I fragged these to give something beautiful to grow out in these more shadowed areas. In fact, everything around this Hydnophora, while some are pretty high-end corals, are extra. The Setosa, the Monty, the rest of the Montes, the Lepto, the Mushroom, the Green Cabbage Leather, these are all ones I have duplicates of. So while I don't want anything to happen, I do have a plan. This whole side of the, the tank is just kind of working to make that reef effect work. So I've got large leathers and devil's hands grown together. I can get away with it because these guys aren't gonna sting each other, they're gonna be fine. What they are gonna do is they're gonna overgrow each other, which can be a problem, and then they will release toxins into the water. All leathers do that. I run carbon all the time, it's a non-issue. But as you can see here, these guys grow into each other, it's not a problem part of how I run the tank. And then the clam. The clam isn't really harmed by any of this. I just gotta make sure that he doesn't get too overgrown, that he doesn't get shadowed out. Right now, it's not a problem. He can open up. If I need to, I've got a little room to move things this way, but really, 
this guy is getting huge. Next up is the large bubble coral in back. This entire section of the tank is dedicated to that bubble coral. He's got big sweeper tentacles and can destroy just about any coral that comes near him. So anything near him is stuff that I'm not too worried about. Like Xenia, I put some Xenia in there. The goal is to get the Xenia to grow back in this area. Relatively low light, not sure if it's gonna to be too happy, but it grows really quickly. Um, when it's in low light, it gets long and stocky and looks pretty cool. So we'll see how this stuff goes here. Also lower light, it should grow slower. And then on the back, I'm putting a nice little Zoa garden. So all of that'll grow together. Now let's talk about the brains. Brains are one I really don't like to touch. And there's no special distance between them that I'm shooting for. It's really just a guess. For the most part, I've got it set up to where they can kind of grow and start growing into each other. And then if they do sting each other, it should just be the new growth. One concern I do have is where this platygyra is. I used to have a different brain coral and one day it just died. My theory is that the Christmas Fabia next to it um, put some tentacles, out, some sweeper tentacles out and killed it. Um, not a guarantee that that's what happened since this platy has been here for quite some time and has done fantastic. So I really don't know if the platy is impervious to the Fabia sting or if it was something else that killed the last Fabia. But really, I don't want these guys touching. Brains are slow to heal, recover from any sort of damage. So I really do work hard to keep these guys as happy and healthy without damaging them as possible. Next is my Euphelia. Euphelia is a fantastic coral if you're looking for something to grow together. Now, you'll see I have basically frog spawn and hammer in here and nothing else, no torch. Frog spawn and hammer can grow right up next to each other without stinging each other. The only real thing I've got to worry about is that they don't overgrow each other. I mean, last thing I want is for a green frog spawn to overgrow and kill a gold one. But for the most part, it's a non-issue. This stuff grows relatively slowly. I've got time to work, time to watch it. They don't sting each other. They're fantastic together. Now, the reason I don't have Torch in here is Torch has a reputation of stinging on everything. They get those super long tentacles and those tentacles can hit hard, especially frog spawns and hammers. Now, I have heard from enough people who have kept torch successfully with their frog spawn and hammers that you might give it a try if you have extra torch frog spawn or hammer to try it with. But I wouldn't do it with that nice new gold torch you bought. Probably the torch would win, but I wouldn't want to find out. One of my favorite corals in the tank is this big fox coral, and it is big. Fully extended, extended, we're looking at eight to 10 inches across. It's a huge coral. We've got Simularia on the right, Scully's on the left. And when this guy's fully extended out, he's actually touching the Scully. The good news is, is fox coral is relatively harmless to the corals around it. It's not really much of a stinger. But even though this is a rescue scully, it's still a really nice coral, which can't really heal very well when it's damaged. I mean, it'll heal, it's just a really slow heal. This is a rescue scully, and that's the whole purpose of it. I'm slowly healing it up. They're a slow coral to heal. So what I probably need to do is remove the Sinularia on the right, basically call this a loser. It's too low of light to really do this whole piece justice. So probably what I need to do is remove this, move the fox coral over, give it a big space because I absolutely love this coral. Next to the fox coral are my scullies, the Ulufilia, which is giant maize brain. We've got a nice Blastomusa wellsy and branching Cephastria up there. Really cool corals. So the branching Cephastria is up towards the top because they can handle the lower light. And then the Scullies really aren't gonna touch or hurt anything. They don't put those 
long extending tentacles out. Really, I'm more worried about something damage, damaging the scullies than the other way around. These are rescue scullies, so they were damaged long before I got them. So they're in the tank, they're healing up, and they just keep looking better and better. Um, I would bet in a year or two, these are gonna be really high-end expensive corals. And right now they look pretty darn good. The Ulophilia is a type of brain coral, so it will sting stuff, so I don't want stuff touching it. Plus, it is a slow one to heal. The Blastomusa is kind of the same way, so I gotta just watch, because they're getting real close to each other. As that blasto moves it or grows it will probably have to move so there we go that's how I have my corals placed in my tank to avoid coral warfare it can really be a problem I'd hate to lose an expensive coral because of bad placement at the same time I'm greedy I want that reef look and I want that 3D look, so as much as possible, I really want this stuff to go together. So I hope this video provided some nice tips and tricks for you, for your tank. So thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.